Item number SCP-826. Index draws you into the book. Object class safe. Special containment procedures. SCP-826 is to be kept in a 25 cm by 25 cm safe with a numerical keypad lock. The combination for the lock will be given only to those with level 2 clearance and will be changed on a weekly basis. Description. SCP-862 is a 20 cm by 15 cm pair of bookends, molded in the shape of two outward-facing dragon heads. Scrapings from the surface of SCP revealed a composition of 99% tin, 0.5% copper, 0.3% antimony, and 0.2% lead, consistent with high-grade pewter. However, it is unclear whether SCP-826 is solid pewter, or whether the pewter is merely a plating for some unknown element which gives the SCP its properties. When a subject places a book between SCP-826, touching both ends, and leaves the room, SCP-826 will, in an instantaneous process, convert the interior of whatever room it is currently located in, a room defined as any enclosed area, into the setting of the contained book. Any form of entry into the room will instead open into a random location within the book's setting. During this transformation process, SCP-826, along with the contained book, will relocate to another part of the book's setting, showing a preference for places where books are normally found, libraries, studies, etc. To reverse the effects of SCP-826, a subject must remove the book from SCP-826, then exit whatever room SCP-826 was found in. The subject will find themselves outside the original room of SCP-826's containment while SCP-826's containment room will be restored to normal. In addition, the subject will find themselves at a random temporal location in the book's plot, ranging from the beginning to near the end of the book. If the subject does not find SCP-826 within the setting before the end of the book, SCP-826 will reset the setting, starting the book's plot over. The subject will then be incorporated into the book as a background character, losing all memories of a previous life outside of SCP-826. Researchers studying SCP-826 are advised to enter the results into Experiment Log-826. Experiment Logs are requested to be written in the following format. Head Researcher Subject Material Equipment Results Addendum Optional Head Researcher Doctor Subject Agent Book Little House on the Prairie Equipment 1-1 one, one. GPS Locator 1-1 one, one. Two-Way Radio 1-1 one, one. Canteen Filled with Water 1-1 one, one. Watch 1-1 one, one. Nine Millimeter Semi-Automatic with Extra Cartridges Results After Agent Entered the room containing SCP-826 and shut the door. GPS locator and radio held by research team stationed outside the door in a room adjoining the containment chamber malfunctioned, cutting off communication to agent. After a period of five minutes, agent emerged from the door unharmed. Agent was dropped in the middle of a prairie with a green smudge off to the west, presumably the Verdigris River of the book. Agent walked towards the river for what he estimated to be an hour before being approached by one of the main characters of the book, returning from a hunting trip, and invited to join him for dinner. Agent accompanied character back to his home, a log cabin in the prairie, where he met the rest of the character's family and discovered SCP-826 sitting on the mantelpiece. When Agent pointed out SCP-826 to the other characters, they claimed SCP was not there before, but did not appear concerned about its presence. Agent then ate dinner with the family and afterwards asked if he could take the SCP-contained book with him. The characters allowed him to take the book, but displayed concern about Agent traveling on the prairie at night. Agent proceeded to remove the book from SCP-826 and exit through the cabin door into the research team's room. Display time on watch is consistent with Agent Agent's report that he had spent several hours in the setting. Addendum Examination of the SCP-contained copy of the book reveals an additional paragraph in the book's midsection describing Agent X's visit in language consistent with Laura Ingalls Wilder's style. No mention is made, however, of SCP-826. Agent is simply described as having dinner and leaving. This textual deviation appears to be unique to this copy, as other copies do not appear to contain this passage. Book is now designated Document 826-1. Researchers are requested to file copies of documents used with Dr. under document 826-number. 
Subject. Agent. Movie. The Shining. DVD. Equipment. 1-1. One, one. GPS locator. 1-1. One, one. Two-way radio. 1-1. One, one. Canteen filled with water. 1-1. One, one. Watch. 1-1. One, one. Nine millimeter semi-automatic with extra cartridges. 1-1. One, one. Video camera attached to agent's hat. Results. After agent entered SCP containing room, GPS and radio proceeded to malfunction as in the previous experiment. After roughly 30 seconds, agent exited the room and gave video camera to research team. Tape was playable and contained the following footage. Agent enters into a hotel room from what appears to be a closet and, after exploring the room and confirming she could not exit through the closet, leaves the room. Agent continues down hallway and eventually arrives in hotel lobby. Agent explores behind front desk and enters hotel manager's office, where SCP-826 sits on shelf beside hotel ledgers. Agent removes DVD from SCP-826 and exits through office door into research room. Addendum. Examination of DVD copy revealed no major plot deviations, most likely due to the fact agent did not interact with any of the characters. Experiment demonstrates that SCP-826 can work on DVDs as well as books. Subject. Agent. Book. The Mammoth Book of Comic Fantasy, a collection of short stories. Equipment. 1-1. One, one. Canteen filled with water. 1-1. One, one. Watch. 1-1. One, one. 9mm semi-automatic with extra cartridges. 1-1. One, one. Video camera attached to agent's headset. Note. Use of GPS locator and two-way radio discontinued due to their uselessness in previous tests. Results. Agent. Returned after seven minutes, having experienced and recorded just over nine hours. Examination of the recorded footage reveals that the agent experienced a portion of the short story The Eye of Tandila and was forced to defend himself from temple guards, killing two. This caused the alarm to be raised, and though Agent was able to retrieve the book from a temple library and escape, the protagonists were apparently caught and executed. The altered copy of the book now reflects this change, although the cause of the alarm is not mentioned, with other stories remaining unaltered. It should also be noted that the book now contains seven fewer pages than a standard unaltered copy. Doctor requests that further experiments be performed with books of short stories to determine whether the entire book will be experienced or just a single story if the book is not recovered from SCP-826 before the stories end. Head Researcher Dr. Edison Subject Agent Book The sword that shoots laser beams when you swing it a three-page short story written by Dr. Edison. The story consists of a poetic description of a sword that shoots laser beams when swung. The story states it stands on a pedestal as thousands of years pass uneventfully. Equipment. 1-1. One, one. Canteen filled with water. 1-1. One, one. Watch. 1-1. One, one. Video camera attached to the agent's headset. Results. Subject is instructed to retrieve the aforementioned sword, test its magical properties, and then bring it out. Subject enters door and returns five minutes later with the original story and sword. Testing proved that sword, when swung in an arc greater than 45 degrees, emits a beam of radiation consistent with the output of a CO2 laser. Sword has since been assigned to Dr. Edison for further study to determine energy source, laser medium, and optical resonators. Video logs show that the sword in question matched textual descriptions, including the ability to shoot laser beams, and that Agent did indeed bring the sword with him. The story itself remains unchanged, except for a paragraph about a man matching Agent's description and stealing the sword and taking it to parts unknown. Sword has been dubbed SCP-826-1. Addendum. Scientific testing has proven inconclusive. Molecular analysis shows that SCP-826-1 has a molecular structure consistent with laser printer paper, the medium original story was printed on, yet behaves like high-grade steel in all other respects. The laser beam, on the other hand, acts like a CO2 laser in all respects, but speed, which is clocked at a mere 60 kilometers per hour, far slower than conventional lasers. Attempts to collect this energy have proven futile as energy dissipates within point seconds, regardless of hitting a target. Of further note, Agent has come under the delusion that he is a man named Galthor from the kingdom of Zulgorn. Agent has insisted on the return of SCP-862-1 to his homeland and to be released from whatever foul sorcery he has been placed under. All attempts at treatment have proven futile. Dr. Edison requests that all further testing with SCP-826 is to be done by D-class subjects. Addendum 2. At precisely on 
Exactly 72 hours from Agent T's last trip into SCP-826. Agent T and SCP-826-1 simultaneously disappeared. No trace has been found of the two, and Agent T's existence has been stripped from all Foundation records, including backup copies. The story used in the test is in all aspects identical, barring a mention that the man's name was Gelthor. Once again, Dr. Edison suggests that further testing of SCP-826 is to be done by D-Class subjects. Subject D-826-01 Book The Sword That Shoots Laser Beams When You Swing It A three-page short story written by Dr. Edison. Same copy that resulted from previous test alterations and all. Equipment 1-1 one, one. Canteen filled with water 1-1 one, one. Watch 1-1 one, one. Video camera attached to subject's headset 1-1 one, one. Police issue X-26 taser loaded Results Subject is asked to retrieve Agent Subject does not return after 5 minutes Agent Cap enters SCP-826 and retrieves the story without incident Story now has additional details on a man in strange garb trying to stop Agent with a magic weapon hereby unknown to man which matches a description of X-26 police taser. Story then describes Agent injuring D-826-01 with SCP-826-01 before locking him in the foulest of dungeons in Castle Hyleth. Recovered footage confirms incident. Subject D-826-02, D-826-03, D-826-04, D-826-05, D-826-06, and D-826-07, all of whom have military training. Book. The Sword That Shoots Laser Beams When You Swing It. A three-page short story written by Dr. Edison. Same copy that resulted from previous test. Equipment. Six six canteens filled with water. Six six watches. Six six video cameras attached to subjects headsets. Six six police issue X twenty six taser loaded. Results: subjects given successfully apprehend Agent and D eight two six zero one, leaving SCP eight two six zero one behind. Story acknowledges all changes, describing six rogues who clamored to avenge the blood of their fallen brother, capturing Agent. Addendum: Agent. Still experiencing pathological delusions and remains convinced that he is a knight named Galthor. Likewise, D-826-01 claims to be a blood wizard named Rothmorn, seeking to claim SCP-826-01 to himself. D-826-01's X-26 taser has turned into a magic staff capable of shooting lightning and is hypothesized to have physical properties similar to SCP-826-01. Item has been labeled SCP-826-02 and has been sent to site for further testing. Also, subjects D-826-02, D-826-03, D-826-04, D-826-05, D-826-06, and D-826-07 are now claiming to be Knights of the Throne sent to aid Galthor. Addendum 2. As in the previous experiment, Agent... Subjects D-826-02, D-826-03, D-826-04, D-826-05, D-826-06, and D-826-07, and SCP-826-02 disappeared at... On... Again, exactly 72 hours from exiting SCP-826. Story now says that Galthor was indeed accompanied by six Knights of the Throne who were armed with arcane weapons given to them by the good wizard Edison Grad. All researchers that had been handling SCP-826-02 or SCP-826 are accounted for. Further monitoring of researchers handling objects from SCP-826 is recommended. Okay, seriously, how did that thing know my name? I'm sure I didn't tell it to either of the agents, and I'm damn sure that I didn't tell any of the subjects. I know this turns up so much in our line of work that it's kind of cliché, but I think the thing might just be sentient. Dr. Edison. Head Researcher, Dr. Luis Pandrona Escopa. Subject, D-826-08. Material, the security log of a preventable Keter-class containment breach at site, dated 1981. Equipment, 1-1, one, one, video recorder, 2-2, two, two, bottles of infection sterilization medicine, a detailed seven-page manual on how to prevent the breach, requiring SCP-005 clothing matching that of an appropriate SCP agent, and level 4 fingerprints outdated. 
results. The test was performed five times, with only one placing D826-08 in the correct time. D826-08 successfully stopped the breach, and was awarded a Foundation Star. SCP-826-01 successfully removed. No difference to current timeline was made. Head Researcher, Dr. Praetorius. Subject, D-21094. Material, Death by the Book by Juliana Deering. Equipment, 1-1 one, one canteen filled with water, 1-1 one, one watch, 1-1 one, one video camera attached to test subject's headset. Results, upon entering, the test subject returned after 15 minutes. After interviewing the subject and reviewing the footage, it was discovered that the beginning of the novel was the first location found by the subject, being the murder scene that is investigated by the main characters and sets the stage for the remainder of the book. The characters, being from a 1930s period piece, reacted inquisitively to the D-class's alien clothing and behavior, but did not impede the subject's examination of the surroundings. In fact, at one point, the investigator, Chief Inspector Bert Song, interpreted the orange jumpsuit worn by the subject as meaning they were from the coroner's office, and encouraged them to wait nearby until he was finished examining the crime scene. It was at this time that the video showed the murder weapon used in the crime, and sitting next to the body, originally written as a marble bookend shaped like a bust of William Shakespeare, was in fact one half of SCP-826. The novel that had been entered was lying on the floor roughly halfway between the murder weapon and the other half of SCP-826. The test subject immediately retrieved the novel, despite the protests of the characters, and exited the novel before they could react. Upon examination, the novel now contained an additional character to the first chapter, described as an opportunistic thief who took advantage of the crime to help her the belongings of the deceased. Of special note is that the murder weapon was now a handsome bookend of particularly high quality. This is the first reported incident of SCP-826 integrating itself into the plot of a novel. It might be an indicator of sentience, or merely the narrative taking advantage of the fact that the SCP is identical to an item already in the novel. More testing is suggested. Head Researcher Dr. Aaron Torres Subject D-87631 Material A copy of A Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin Equipment 1-1 one, one, Military Grade Saber Results Upon entering, the test subject found itself in a circular room with a table in it. At the table were the members of the Small Council, as described in the original work. Test subject was instructed to disembowel the first human it sees in the work. This happened to be Lord Eddard Stark, a major character of the book. Upon examination, after D-87631 exited the room, the book contained several new paragraphs on an attempt by a very unintelligent assassin on Eddard Stark's life. According to the text, Eddard recovered quickly, despite D-87631 reassuring Dr. Torres that I stabbed him until he was definitely not going to live. The description of the attack supports this. It is theorized that SCP-826 takes measures to preserve the core narrative of the story. The purpose of this test was to see what would happen if we did something that would affect the main plot of a complex story, such as A Song of Fire and Ice. Also, I love that book. Dr. Torres. Head Researcher. Dr. Zochvi. Subject. D-2828. Material. After Man by Dougal Nixon. Equipment. 2-2. Two, two. Canteens filled with water. 2-2. Two, two. Bags of trail mix. 1-1. One, one. Jacket. 1-1. One, one. Sleeping bag. 1-1. One, one. Head-mounted camera. Results. Upon entering, the test subject found that it was in temperate forest. D-2828 walked for about 30 minutes before it found a small clearing in the trees where it set up camp, eventually sleeping. Upon waking up, the subject packed up and ate and drank its remaining trail mix and water. D-2828 walked back into the forest, where, after 28 minutes, came across a small group of rabbocks grazing. The test subject was watching them when it seemed to realize that the rabbocks were getting anxious. Subject then turned around and saw a group of five phalanx closing in on them. After the subject turned around, the Rebox fled at full speed. Showing signs of fear, subject ran at full speed and followed the Rebox. Subject ran roughly 54 meters before one of the phalanx tackled and bit it on the leg. At that point, the subject took a sharp stick and stabbed at the phalanx's eye, causing it to run away. Subject ran for six minutes until it reached a stream in which SCP-826 was sitting on a boulder. The subject walked towards it and picked up SCP-826. Subject saw a cave and walked through it, returning to the testing chamber. 
One of the pictures in the book now showed D-2828 fighting off the phalanx, titled The Last Human to Ever Live. The reason for us testing is to see the effects on a book with illustrations. Dr. Zotchvi, 